Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all well. Today is Saturday and I'm off to do something so exciting. I am going to a calligraphy class with a major calligraphy artist. I have to run out right now, so I'll tell you more about it in a second. But um, I'll show you what I'm wearing. This is what I'm wearing for today. I'm wearing the jumpsuit that I wore the other day from Shein and I absolutely love it. I love it. I'm just wearing um, my boots. I'm also throwing on this faux fur jacket because I just need to keep warm, I just cannot do it. And then I have this bucket bag that I also am pairing with this outfit. It's in a gallery called Manifesting the Unseen. The exhibition uh, Manifesting the Unseen has been showing how we can display Islamic art and how it's used in kind of modern day life, in culture and in society. Then I'm going to go in right now and I'll show you what I get up to. and you automatically need to know that this should be one and a half dot and then you come down and you have to bring it down on the baseline and making sure there's a one dot gap here but it comes with the practice and then when you, when you come up and you end the bar it's, it makes like a boat shape so it's like a, it's a, it's a semi round but it's, it's in a boat shape and then in the, in, in the middle you have five dots gap I'm back home from the calligraphy. I've also got changed because I'm going for dinner at a friend's house. Um, I'm gonna have some Algerian cuisine. So I'm super excited for that. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about calligraphy, why I did it and what I kind of got out of it. So um, as you can see, all my calligraphy is here. I'm from East London and East London is like known for its galleries and pop-up shops and little boutiques and just like really cool niche things like that. And I was walking past one day and I saw this um, gallery and it looked very like Arabian and calligraphy and I just walked into it. It was quite a small gallery and I spoke to the woman that was there. I think she, I believe she's a curator. And um, she was telling me about all the classes that are coming up on the weekends. And she mentioned a calligraphy class. Now, I am an absolute calligraphy fiend. I feel like I'm quite artistic. I don't necessarily exhibit that art. Or I don't necessarily have an outlet. I've just always um, kind of been artistic. Calligraphy has been one of those things that's been on my like want-to-do list. I've got so many things on my want-to-do list. But calligraphy is definitely one of the things that I... I always say to myself like I want to get into it so this year I got a calligraphy pen set so this is the calligraphy pen set that I got and um, my sister also got it and she recommended it which is why um, I now have it and it's called manuscript and I'll leave a link for it down below the only thing is that it is a calligraphy set for just like English writing it's not for Arabic calligraphy and the one thing about it is that if you look at the, the pens there if you look at the, the actual nib itself so the nibs are straight cut 
Now, when it comes to calligraphy, Arabic calligraphy, the nib does have to be cut at a 60 degree angle. But I mean, it's a great place to start and you know, it's better than nothing. So this set comes with um, pens. I think it comes with paper as well. Yeah, the pens are in my bag, guys. But yeah, you can see all the cartridge inks and things like that. Like as a child, I was that child that used to write with a fountain pen and I've just always been someone who likes to use ink in general and the other day my husband came home with with this he came home with a pen feather with um, some ink in it as well so it's just it's just meant to be like calligraphy is just meant to happen in my life anyway so she, she mentioned that um, she mentioned that the calligraphy class was going on uh, in two weeks time but it was fully booked I think there were only like 15 spaces or something quite a small space fully booked and I literally begged her I was like please let me in I'm really passionate <laughs> it's like I'm really passionate and I bought a calligraphy set and I would love to join the class and please there, is there any chance that I can just squeeze in I promise you I'll just be invisible <laughs> I've really been using anything I just sit there and um, I thought I think she saw like how passionate I was so she said to me <laughs> to write down my email address and she'll let me know she'll email the artist and let me know if the artist is if the artist is okay with me like squeezing in the email address with her and then that was that and then one week later i got an email from her saying that the artist has agreed to um allow me to join the class and i think someone there was a cancellation um so yeah she let me in and that was really cool because there was a very long waiting list and i managed to skip that list by showing that i was passionate <laughs> The artist's name is Maida Noor. She is super talented. Her artwork is absolutely beautiful. Please Google her artwork. I think she's on Instagram as well. I'll leave her information down below. She's super talented. First, it was a three hour session. The first hour was learning about the history of Arabic calligraphy and kind of like how it's come about and how Arabic was initially written with, with no vowel um, symbols, no dots. So like Berta and that were just a boat. That was it. There were no dots. So. I don't actually understand how that's possible. How were they able to under how were they able to know what sign it is? As time went and people from outside of the Arab world were entering um, Arab countries, they had to adapt the Arabic language to make it more accessible to outsiders. So they started to add diacritics. Initially it wasn't something that um, people wanted because it kind of opened up the Arabic language to non- Arabic speakers and non-Arabs as well so they starts to add the dots it also starts to add the vowel sounds which tells you if something's a, a ta a t or a tu for example um, and um, that that kind of changed the Arabic language completely and people were it, people were in two minds about it at the time um, the plus side the advantage of adding the, the symbols and the dots was that it helps to understand what sound the word is making especially as I mentioned for non-Arab speakers but then the negative um, the disadvantage of it that people were saying at the time was that it was changing the word of God and although it obviously it hasn't changed the sound of God but it was not initially written with the dots and the symbols so I think people were a bit anti-changing Arabic in that way but as time went um, Arabic became a an art form in terms of the way that it was written and initially it was written in a very stiff sort of flat style and as time went there were scholars and um, artists and masters who started to write Arabic in a more cursive style so the style that you guys we read in the Quran today that style the, cu the curves and um, the cursive style is something that was developed in order to beautify the Arabic words and the Arabic language even more um, essentially this cursive style that you see in calligraphy is based around four main elements the first element is the rhombic dot now I spent literally the whole day making these one big dots and as I mentioned because your uh, pen is angled when you dip it into the ink and write it does kind of give it a rhombus shape so rhombus I'm sure most of you know but a rhombus is a parallelogram but then the four sides are equal length the whole calligraphy style was initially based off of five dots five rhombic dots and that is the length of the alif the second element is the alif alif is basically what every every other letter is based around so in terms of its length in terms of how the other letters align around it that is the second element the third element is the circle so there are a few letters seen and sheen where they have a curve here and essentially they do make a circle when 
um, you curve a rim around. And, and the last element is the similarity. So similarity between different letters and how the different letters align in order to kind of make a beautiful pattern. And it's very technical, very mathematical, very scientific. I feel like it's not just an art where you just kind of draw it to your pleasure. There is a science behind it. And those four elements give harmony, balance and beauty to the letters and the calligraphy writing. Now this style is just one style of calligraphy writing. There are so many other styles that have been developed over time. So there was a style that only the royals used to use and no one else could use it, only the royals used to use. If you've seen Farsi writing before, you'll see how different it is to, to this, this type of writing that you see in the Quran. And that's also replicated it by Urdu as well. Both of those languages um, use a different style that was adapted. Maida was talking about how writing calligraphy and to be a master in calligraphy it's such a grueling process when you go to a master in order to learn how to be a calligrapher and how to master it and to be a master yourself you don't start with the letters you don't start with anything to do with calligraphy you actually begin by um being starting from the bottom so you start in the workshop you shave the pens you clean you give the tea and coffee you've kind of cleansed yourself of any pride that you might have or any kind of me that you might have because when you're writing these letters these words and these letters they're not your words they're not your letters um they're not it's not something that you have developed and that you have um it's not something that you have produced and you have developed you are simply writing it you are simply copying it and the word nusk actually means copying um so you kind of get rid of any pride that you have and then you can start to embark on your calligraphy journey i found all the tools that i was using um earlier on on amazon and it's only i think it's only like 20 something pounds so it comes with five different um pen sizes it comes with ink so it's kind of black chinese i think it was japanese ink no yeah it comes with black japanese ink which is apparently quite dark and it's quite good for calligraphy and then in the calligraphy pots that you are dipping your pen in it also comes with some silk the silk threads absorb the ink and don't allow too much to go into your pens um and then it also comes with like a pot holder as well so you can put your pens in there so yeah i'm gonna buy the set and i'll take you guys on my journey and show you guys how i progress i hope that you guys enjoyed watching this and seeing what i got up to today um and i'm off now i'm not gonna vlog later because um i'm going to someone's house i don't really want to you know rip my camera out i hope that you guys have a great day and i'm wishing you all of the best of health i see you guys very soon in my next video tomorrow bye